That prayer should be our first response, not our last resort. And so, man, such an incredible message. Thank you so much for that. Hey, our last communicator is our worship coordinator here at Oviedo. Uh, her name is Kaylee, and she leads from this platform every week with such joy and enthusiasm that I don't understand how some of you can't not be jumping. Like, like we're just we're there. And so she also helps lead uh, our Empower Small Groups at Action Church, which is some of our women's small groups, which is incredible to be a part of. Uh, she's an incredible pastor, leader. Mom, we go for Kaylee Drake. <laughs> with a really funny story that actually happened in one of our Oviedo location meetings. So I'm going to set the scene. Are you guys ready? So we were in Pastor Trent's office. There's a table in there. Me and our producer, Amber, our backs were towards the wall. You've got Ben, Pastor Brian, and Sarah. And we're in some serious conversations, and Pastor Trent is talking. And all of a sudden, Pastor Trent, with big eyes, says, there is a huge bug on the wall. And you better believe this girl right here jumped her butt out of the seat and ran out of the room. Amber, this is hilarious, Amber actually went into a ball under the table going, no, no, repeatedly. Ben's kind of just watching what's happening. Sarah's screaming, Pastor Brian, get this. Pastor Brian took his bare hand and hit this giant wasp. Out of all things, he hit a wasp with his bare hand. And as he did that, the wasp went down under the table to where Amber is still going, no! And she army crawls her way out of the room and we were all laughing hysterically. It was, it was a sight to see. Um, but as funny as this story may be, this is such a good picture of what fear can do to us. Fear can make us run away from what God has called us to. Fear can make us isolate ourselves and hide like Amber was under that table. And fear can make you do some crazy things like Pastor Brian hitting a wasp with his bare hand. This is the enemy's primary weapon. And there's two kinds of fear. One kind of fear that keeps you from harm, and the other kind of fear, and that's the spirit of fear. And that is the one that the enemy uses, and that's the one that we're going to be talking about today. And this kind of fear, it keeps you from moving forward in everything that God has for our lives. But I have some really good news. Because the Bible says that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind, which means, get this, which means we don't have to live with this spirit of fear that I'm talking about. John 14, 27 says, and this is actually Jesus talking to the disciples before he went to the cross. He said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. Do not give peace. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Do not let means that we are going to have reasons for our hearts to be troubled and afraid. But it means that we get to choose whether we can let it be troubled or afraid. It takes action on our part. In my life, fear has been something that the enemy has really tried to use against me. I found myself in some seasons where I felt really trapped by fear. And I had to rise up and be so determined to not let the enemy win in my life. I had to actively choose for my heart to not be troubled or afraid. And I believe that we all have to actively choose for our hearts to not be troubled or afraid. So how do we do that? How do we fight fear? I'm so glad you asked. Number one, trust and rely. Trust in God and rely on the Holy Spirit. We have to rely on the Holy Spirit to give us that confidence and that peace that only he can give. Romans 15, 13 says, I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. We can gain peace because we trust in him. And that scripture that I was talking about earlier where Jesus was talking to the disciples before he went to the cross and he said, my peace I give you. That peace that he was talking about is the Holy Spirit. He left the Holy Spirit with us. 
And I think oftentimes we we desire to do something on our own to gain that peace. Like if I could just do this to have peace. But peace can't be found on our own doing. We have to rely on the Holy Spirit to come in and teach us, to teach us peace. We are to do our part by faith, and the Spirit will do His part by power. So how do we fight fear? Number one, we trust and rely. And number two, we pray like, like Pastor Brian was talking about. When we neglect prayer, we're actually choosing to fight on our own. And when we choose to fight on our own, that's when you find yourself miserable yeah. and defeated. Yeah. Philippians 4, 6, I love this version. Pastor Brian actually read this one too, but this is so good. It says, don't be pulled in different directions or worried about a single thing. Be saturated in prayer through each day, offering your faith-filled requests before God with overflowing gratitude. Tell him every detail of your life, then God's wonderful peace that transcends human understanding will guard your heart and mind through Jesus. Pray, and then he promises peace. I also love in this scripture that it says, be saturated in prayer throughout each day. That means that prayer needs to be a continual thing. We need to be praying every single day. Listen, when we pray, it renews our minds. And I don't know about you, but I need my mind renewed every single day. Prayer changes our, our focus from our fears to our capable God. Prayer allows the Holy Spirit to come into our situations to work on our behalf. So how do we fight fear? Number three, know and believe his truth. Did you know that there is actually a difference between knowing and believing? You can know something all day long and not believe it. But we have to know and believe God and his word. We have to believe that we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. We have to believe that he will never leave us or forsake us. I want you guys to hear this today. Our greatest weapon against fear is the word of God. When the enemy puts fearful thoughts into our minds or when our circumstances have us riddled in fear, we have to know the word of God to be able to fight with it. We gotta hide the word of God in our hearts. In Matthew 4, 1, you'll find Jesus. And he was in the desert. And Satan actually came to tempt him. And guess how Jesus fought? Jesus didn't fight with his own words or his own strength. But he fought with the very power of the word of God. And maybe you're in here today. And fear is owning you. I've been there. And fear has you trapped. It's keeping you from moving forward in what God has for your life. It's keeping you from experiencing the joy and the freedom that God wants you to live in. Can I tell you, you're not meant to live with the spirit of fear that I am talking about. You are meant to live with the peace that Jesus promised us, that he left us with. He is calling us today to let not our hearts be troubled. Let's invite the Holy Spirit into our lives to give us the peace that only he can give. We can choose to feed our fears by believing the lies, or we can choose to fight our fears by relying on God and believing him at his word. Let's rise up. Let's fight. Yeah. Oh, thank you for being all of our